Hi, I'm Rick with Fathom Academy. I'm the lead instructor and chief operations officer. We are an indoor swift water rescue training facility in the Austin, Texas area. While everybody's currently kind of working from home, I'm doing the same thing. I wanted to put out a brief video on equipment. I've had a lot of questions about equipment since I started the course, so I wanted to talk about it real quick. So, swift water rescue equipment. First things first, wetsuit. Basically, any type of wetsuit out on the market that you're comfortable with will work. I actually prefer the NRS style wetsuit that is specifically made for swift water rescue. I still think this is one of the better ones on the market. As long as it covers your arms and your legs fully, provides you some decent protection, you should be good. Now, dry suits. I didn't want to bring my dry suit out of the closet, but let's talk about dry suits. Dry suits work great for shore-based operations, but in my experience, maybe there's others out there that have had better luck. In my experience, I have not found a dry suit that keeps out moving water. Dry suits also have some other drawbacks. If you put a hole in a dry suit, it's basically out of service. You put a hole in a wetsuit, it's still a wetsuit. Also, the fastest route that you lose heat for your body is from here up, which the dry suit does not protect. Also, the number one source of contaminants for the human body is from here up, which the dry suit does not protect. So, I'm not the biggest fan of dry suits in the world, but don't take my word for it. That's just my two cents worth. Okay, next, let's talk about PFDs. I carry two types of PFDs on a deployment. One is just a basic stripped down model of a PFD. Just notice that I don't have any extra equipment or anything like that on here. This is so I can move more quickly and more effectively if I've got to make an in water entry, which we try to avoid to do. But if you do, the less drag, the better it's gonna be for you. So all I've got on this one is just a whistle. Other than that, completely streamlined. Now, if I'm doing more of a shore-based operations type thing, then I can take a PFD with just extra equipment. You'll note there's carabiners, pockets. I've got at least one knife on there, which I'm getting ready to contradict here in a minute. And then back here, I've got even more equipment, including a SAM splint, ACE wraps, and a survival blanket. Sam splints more for me than it is victims because I'm the guy that actually broke his ankle during training. Okay, next thing I wanna talk about is helmets. Again, I carry two helmets, one for day, one for night. The reason for this is, is you put lights on a helmet, it creates more weight. You can also pull the helmet down over your chin if you don't have your chin strap done correctly. And if there's any way to avoid getting your helmet light wet, please do that. Now, thing about helmet lights, you'll notice that there are two on here. That's because I believe in the rule of two is one and one is none. This is a water environment. Despite the resistance you may see from the manufacturer, water may or may not get in there and cause your light to fail. So a backup already built in place is a good idea. The second thing is the typical clips that these straps go into will not hold your light on there in moving water. So don't be shy, drill some holes, secure your light with some zip ties. The other thing is when you're done with a water operation, whether it's training or an actual event, take your batteries out of your helmet lights, get rid of them. Leave your battery compartments open, let them dry out completely and then put new batteries in, you're ready to go. Another thing to have in your gear, spare batteries. Okay, throw bags. I'm going to do a much more detailed video on throw bags later. The only thing I want to say in this video is throw bags come in all shapes and sizes. Just make sure you've got the one that's going to fit your needs. Now, if you need to take a throw bag with you into the water, I recommend you do like this where it's in a rescue belt. This fits behind the small of your back. That way it's out of your way. It's not creating drag. Just clipping a regular throw bag onto yourself trying to swim it just creates drag you don't want to do that if you can avoid it okay other things let's talk about knives like I said I'm going to contradict myself here in a minute knives on your PFD believe it or not I'm actually not a fan they don't do near as much as you like to think and they're blunt tip so don't poke a hole in yourself so this actually believe it or not in my opinion is not necessary until after class because this one actually comes with a bottle opener but that's a whole other story. So, what to use in place of a knife? Let's talk about our environment. 
getting people out of trap cars or having to cut things like seat belts. So, seat belt cutter. Good old fashioned cheap EMS style trauma shears that will cut through a penny. Also, if you lose them, they're easy to replace. Now, can't speak for everybody in the world, but one of the biggest things that creates a strainer in our part of the world here in Texas is a barbed wire fence. So some type of wire cutter on your PFD might get you out of jam to get stuck up one of those. Uh, last but not least, a window punch. We don't want to open car doors and moving water to take people out. We want to take them out through the windows. However, if the windows are in the up position, we need a way to get them quickly into the down as in non-existent position, i.e. a window punch. Okay, footwear. I did not bring out any examples of footwear because any type of footwear that you're comfortable in is going to suffice. Keep in mind, whatever footwear you wear in the water, if you've got to go look for your victim downstream, you're going to want that to be durable enough to allow you to go for a short hike if necessary. To me, one of the best forms of footwear out there is take your old duty boots, drill some holes in the bottom of the sole so the water will drain out, and put those in your swift water bag. That way, every year, you don't have to go out and buy new water boots. You just take what's the old duty boots and put them in your swift water bag. Tennis shoes, water shoes, anything like that, whatever you're comfortable in. There's lots of great boots out there on the market. I just don't have a particular brand right now that I can really recommend to anybody, so whatever you're comfortable with. Gloves, not required, but definitely recommended. I haven't done it to these particular gloves yet, but if you're like me, I cannot tie knots with gloves, so I typically cut the fingers off of my gloves. That's optional for you. Again, lots of good gloves out there in the market, but I'll be honest with you, $20 pair of mechanics gloves from Home Depot will get you where you wanna go. Another thing about footwear, I'll be brief on this part. Neoprene socks will change your life. Make sure shoes easy to get on and off. And then last but not least that I've got laid out here is a cowtail. This can extend your live bait attachment on the rear of your PFD. It's also great if you're doing a tension diagonal style rescue because it gives you a little bit of room to maneuver once you get out to where you're going without having to unclip from the system. Whatever you do, when you do something like this, just make sure it folds up and is clipped out of the way. You don't want to clip anything like this because this will snag on something and hang you up. So just make sure it stays up and out of the way. Other pieces of equipment to think about are carabiners. There's debates out there, locking versus non-locking. I honestly don't have a preference. I think you should carry a little bit of each. Other things to keep in mind for your equipment bag. Again, spare batteries. Silum sticks for tying your throw bags, extra zip ties, a plastic garbage bag for putting wet clothes into, change of dry clothes couldn't hurt. And last but not least, believe it or not, especially with what's going on, y'all might find this funny, you might want to carry a little toilet paper with you because you never know when you're going to be out and about and you got to go take care of some business. Again, my name is Rick. I'm the lead instructor at Fathom Academy and the chief operations officer. Please visit our website, www.fathomacademy.com. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at r.cummins at fathomacademy.com. That's r.c-u-m-m-i-n-s at fathomacademy.com. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you.